Hey everybody, welcome back to Pizza Sutra. Today we're gonna cover a Pep 62 sausage pizza. So this thing looks lovely and I can't wait to put it in the oven. So let's throw it in there and get going to town, baby! For our Pep 62 sausage pizza, preheat oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Unwrap pizza, remove from cardboard circle and place directly on center rack of oven. Bake for 12 to 15 minutes, brown and crisp as desired. Ovens may vary. So if you've ever watched an episode of ours, you guys will know that we're big fans of sci-fi, animation, fantasy, and of course, heavy metal. Nothing is more metal than Heavy Metal Magazine. Heavy Metal Magazine is, you know, it's a mix of Hyborian Age stuff. It's got, you know, a thick coat of like, sci-fi painted all over it and it's just a totally rock and roll magazine where a lot of artists came out and just spewed creativity all over the place. In 1975 it started out as a French metal magazine called Metal Herlant. I believe that's how you say that. Herlant. I'm not French. I don't know. It didn't find its way to the US until 1977 but viewer discretion is advised because this specific magazine is very, very adult orientated and it contains tons of adult themes. And we'll get into that a little later. In a time when the comic book code had a firm grasp on the comic book industry, and what I mean by that is the comic book code wouldn't let them have like adult themes like drugs, like sex, violence, you know, that was not allowed because comics were considered a children's thing. Some artists and some adults didn't necessarily like that. so. How heavy metal got around this and how all these artists got to really show what they wanted and just be creative with their stories and be wild and crazy, they put comic books in a magazine. Because technically, a magazine was not under the, you know, code of comics. Because heavy metal did this, it allowed a lot of art styles and themes to be really shown in the magazine. It was basically Frazetta cranked up to 11 and in the magazine it had short stories, short comics that were a continuation of all these artists and it showed all kinds of, you know, cool pictures and articles about all this stuff. This kind of freedom from Heavy Metal Magazine really allowed artists to really push themselves and kind of do whatever they wanted and just have a good time which led to the viewers like you and me to have a really cool experience. They were able to draw big guns and big guns and swords and swords and like just all kinds of cool themes and just pushing the boundaries of what was acceptable and what wasn't. In 1981, they started making an animated movie. So how the heavy metal movie was set up is it was an anthology, similar to how the magazine was, is it was filled with little short stories. So I recently watched it, it was pretty cringy and it was kind of sexist and there was definitely, definitely, definitely adult themes in it, but there was one that really like was like, Bam, that's cool. And that was like, I think the second one before the end where like these zombies are coming out of B-52s and stuff. It was really cool. It was really cool. Some of the major contributors to Heavy Metal Magazine were people like William Gibson. He did Neuromancer. Moebius, I think is how you say it. He really influenced the art style of the fifth element, a favorite of all sci-fi nerds. H.R. Geiger, Geiger and uh, Dan O'Bannon, both of those guys worked on Alien, you guys know that. There are some heavy, heavy hitters that lined up to be on this magazine because there was so much freedom for the artist or writer or whatever. A fun fact about Heavy Metal Magazine, Kevin Eastman actually bought it. And who is Kevin Eastman, do you ask? Kevin Eastman is the co-creator of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He used some of that turtle money to buy one of his favorite magazines and he still owns it to this day. And we're gonna talk more about that in a later episode. But until then, we're gonna eat some pizza right now.
All right, we've got the Peps 62 thin crust sausage pizza coming at you, coming at you live. Hmm. So first thing I notice is uh, usually the crust, and in this time it was the crust. Very flavorful cheese. So the crust is a little chewy. I think we could have left it in a little longer. The top looked like it was pretty well done, but the bottom doesn't seem to have gotten as done. So that results in a little bit of chewy. But man, the cheese, the cheese is so flavorful. Right there, that white part is, is a big like gob of mozzarella cheese and I'm about to bite into it. It's a little stretchier than the rest of the cheese, but you can definitely tell there's a little more flavor behind that. I kind of feel like this is uh, competing with a Jack's pizza because it's really, like it's really, really, really similar to what a Jack's is, except I think the cheese is of better quality and there's not that many sausages. And the fun thing about this is the sausages are under the cheese and they're little. They're not big sausages, they're little. And the spices in the sausages seem about right. So uh, that's really cool. It's a very tasty sausage. And because it's a thin crust, I take a bite and it's like gone. The crispification on the edge is very, very pleasant. I like that a lot. It's not too crunchy to where if you have sensitive teeth, it's gonna hurt your teeth or anything. So that's really cool. There's just the right amount of crunch on that edge. Well, I just have seemed to uh, completely finish this pizza. So I'm gonna let the rest of the Pizza Sutra crew try some and we'll be back with the results. All right, we're back from mowing down on that Pep 62 Thin Crust Sausage Pizza. So this pizza is, you know, equivalent to a Jack's or a Jack's Thin Crust or a Palermo's Thin Crust because this is also a Thin Crust Pizza. So for our scores, the crust got a four out of eight slices. It was so-so, four right in the middle. You know, wasn't bad, wasn't good. It was thin, uh, I think we could have cooked it a little bit longer and you know, had a little more crisp, but overall, that's fine. I enjoyed it. For our sauce, we got a three out of eight slices because we don't think there was enough in it. It wasn't zesty enough, it wasn't punching through everything how we would like. For our cheese, we got a six out of eight slices because that cheese was very flavorful. There's plenty of it on that pie and the little hints of the round mozzarella discs or whatever that was, I'm not even sure what it was, but it was delicious. So that's a cool fun thing about it. For our toppings, we got a three out of eight slices. Toppings were sausage and kind of that mozzarella, but the sausages were just too small. There wasn't enough of them and they weren't flavorful enough for our, you know, what we wanted. For our overall score, we got a four out of eight slices. That's a great mid-range pie at a price point coming in at around, you know, $4, depending where you're shopping. So it's not bad. It's a little more expensive than Jack's, but the cheese I think is a lot better quality. So I think that's something that you should look for when spending your hard earned money on pizzas. Well, thanks everybody for showing up. Remember we have an Etsy store. Check out some of our older episodes if you haven't already because there's a lot of cool pizza stuff in those. You can buy us a slice, link below. Remember everyone, pizza is love. Be cool to one another, party hard. Mm-hmm.